What is going on everybody? I am here today playing Space Megaforce, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely my favorite shooter of all time. Big part of that is the music. Take a listen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This game is awesome, and uh, the objective here is to see how far I can get without dying. And it's going to be tough, it won't be easy, it's going to be a challenge, but I think I'm up for it. Now, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit, because I am just getting over a flu, and it's a flu I have for about two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks, it was a while, but it's that flu that's going around, everybody's got it, and uh, not fun. But I'm over that flu just enough to actually be able to talk again. So, bear with me. Might have some sniffles, might have some cough. Might have a little voice cracking like I'm going through puberty again. But, just bear with me. So one of the cool things about this game is that you can actually uh, change your firing mode. Like just now I made this circle weapon actually freeze in place. You can use that to hit enemies with uh, your stationary uh, circle projectiles. Or you can just let the circles uh, spin around you and protect you. Generally that's the best bet, but there are definitely times when you want to stop the uh, spin and, and hit a particular enemy. Um, every special weapon in this game has uh, multiple firing modes. Some of them have a bunch of firing modes. And uh, press, I think, R, and you switch between the firing modes. And uh, adds a lot of depth to the gameplay. And you've already got eight weapons, and each one has an average of like, you know, two or three firing modes. It's a lot of, a lot of variety, a lot of variety in your weapons. So, one thing I want to note right now is that this first level takes place over the Nazca Plains in uh, South America, I believe. And uh, it's a great real world reference. You've got, uh, you got the aliens attacking, and you're, you're the only one who can stop them and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still pretty, pretty influenza-y. Um, so in any case, I guess for some reason the aliens decide to come down to the, uh, the Nazca Plains for their invasion. And uh, they've got this giant ship hovering over here, and, and I have to infiltrate that ship. I also have to go up into space and take out a bunch of their uh, ships up there as well. It's a great game, um, and uh, it's great to play it again, too. This is a game that I played for the first time back in like 1995, I think, maybe 1994, but uh, I remember reading it, or <laughs> reading about it in a Nintendo Power in 1992 or so. I was at the library uh, with a bunch of my classmates, and we were just reading Nintendo Powers. Uh, it was the best thing about going to the library, is, is reading issues of Nintendo Park. And uh, there was one issue that had uh, this game and Axley, which is another great shooter. And uh, I remember reading about it and saying, wow, i got to play both those games someday. Alright, let me get a little closer to the microphone here. Um, but yeah, I ended up uh, renting both of them before too long, and they're both fantastic. Uh, this game in particular, I uh, got pretty obsessed with it for a couple weeks uh, when I rented it, and uh, I played it so much, but I couldn't beat the game. I just wasn't any good at shooters. I'm still not, but at least now I can actually finish some of them. And uh, yeah, so I was playing a lot of Space Mega Force, and this was around the time that I. Uh, really wanted Zelda Link's Awakening as like my main game that I wanted and uh, I remember the last time I rented Space Megaforce I got up to like level 10 out of 12 or so and I was really close to beating the game and uh, next thing I knew the uh, the store that I was gonna get Link's Awakening from they actually called my mom and let her know that hey we've got Link's Awakening here to, to pick up this was a couple of years after uh, Link's Awakening actually came out. Um, but regardless, they didn't have any in stock. So yeah, they, they got Link's Awakening in stock, but I was almost done with this game. And I'll tell you what, as much as I like this game, 
Um, I, I like it more now than I did then, but still, I liked it a lot back then. And as much as I like this game, I turned it off and uh, brought it back and went and got Link's Awakening from the store. And I jumped right on Link's Awakening. I think I got to the end of like the second dungeon in the first evening that I had it. But yeah, those are the days, you know, you just you got so excited when uh, when you got a hold of some game that you've been looking for, you know. But yeah, Link's Awakening actually pried me away from this game. Alright, so here we've got the first boss, who is also the boss of stage 10, which is as far as I got with my rental back in the day. It wasn't until much later that I actually managed to beat the game. Okay, we gotta be careful. So, the laser, as you can see, is a pretty awesome weapon. It covers a lot of turf. And uh, I would say that the laser is probably the best weapon in the game. It just has a lot of, uh, uh, how do you say? Shit, I gotta concentrate here. So yeah, the laser has a lot of uh, very useful applications, it's very powerful. Um, you can set it to actually home in on enemies. Um, honestly, I'd say the circle is probably the best weapon if it's your first time playing because you can stop the sphere like I'm doing right now. Um, it's also extremely uh, protective, so a great defensive weapon is the circle. The laser, however, definitely the best offensive weapon. So I think once you get good at the game, stick to the laser. But when you're first starting out, maybe stick to the circle. Now you may have noticed that in that boss fight just now, I actually uh, I got blown up. And yet the video is continuing. So this is a how far can I get without dying video. And I just died. So what, what gives? Well, here's the thing. In Space Megaforce, when you take a hit, all it does is just shut down the weapon that you're current, currently using. So if you have a weapon that's powered up, Currently, and you get hit, then uh, you'll lose a bunch of your power-ups. It'll it'll shut the weapon down to like level one or two. You know, uh, you won't lose all of it, but it'll be much weaker until you power it back up again. And you do that by collecting these uh, golden eggs that are uh, strewn about. So um, yeah, I don't consider that a death though. If you get hit and your weapon powers down, that's just taking a hit. And if you get hit while your weapon is low power. Your ship actually blows up, but then it reappears right away. I don't consider that losing a life either. That is just uh, basically going through all of your available hits. So you want to keep your weapon as powered up as you can so that you can keep playing if you get hit. And uh, yeah, if you have bad luck, you get hit twice in a row. Your ship blows up. You will uh, you'll lose that gold ship in the lower, lower right corner there. And uh, that gold ship is basically a ship that will allow you to continue right where you are. Um, once you lose that gold ship, however, get hit again after that, and you actually uh, die for real. You have to go back to the last checkpoint. So I consider that to be the real death. The true death, if you will. So I can take hits as long as I have my weapon powered up. And even once I run out of weapon power-ups, I can still take a hit if I have a gold ship available to uh, bounce right back to where I was. Now, if I get hit again after that without replenishing any of those things, then I'm SOL. As soon as I go back to a checkpoint, the uh, expedition is over. The how far can I get without dying expedition. So I'm back to using the laser, which is... Uh, very uh, very good weapon as I've already mentioned and as you can see I'm not using the homing capability because the uh, the regular variety of the laser is more than sufficient for this area and I get hit right as I say that so use your smart bombs judiciously especially in, the, in uh, the case of this particular playthrough because the objective is not to die <laughs> ah, excuse me so yeah I have to make judicious use of those smart bombs don't be afraid to uh, to launch. Don't be afraid to launch those smart bombs. 
This uh, second level is kind of cool. It's it's like a space station, obviously, and uh, it just has some great Mode 7 effects where the uh, station kind of uh, moves in and out of the background. You know, great, great special effects brought to us by the Super NES. This was extremely uh, new when this game came out. These these kinds of Mode 7 uh, three-dimensional kind of effects. So yeah, we're doing pretty well. We're, we're powering up the laser. I've already taken more hits than I feel like I should have in the first couple levels. Um, under normal circumstances, back when I used to play this game, um, as a kid, when I, when I couldn't even beat the game, I could at least get through the first couple levels without getting hit, you know? So not off to the best start, but I'm, I'm gonna try to really hunker down here and get as far as I can without dying. I'd like to at least show you like a good portion of the game. But you know, if all else fails, I think one of these days, sometime soon, I'm going to do a full playthrough of this game. Probably the Japanese version, Super Alest. I'm probably saying that wrong, but uh, Super Alest, the Japanese version of Space Mega Force. Uh, also a great game, because obviously it's the same game. Um, but it's actually got like story cutscenes and stuff, so there's a little bit more to it. It's definitely worth uh, checking out, I think, so I'll be doing that. And I'll probably do a full playthrough of that game, so you'll be able to, to see me play through the entire game at that point, because there's no way I'm going to get through the entire game today. Oh, just took a hit. That's not good. I didn't even see what hit me. So now I'm using the Sprite, which is my third favorite weapon. It's very uh, gradius -y. It's just like the option in Gradius. So this is the second boss. It's... Um, it's tricky to an extent, but once you take out all the little gun emplacements, all you have to deal with are the two main main sphere throwers. I don't know what else to call them, the, the two sphere throwing cannons. Fire these big uh, spinny sphere things at you. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use the circle now. Oh geez, I am not doing well right now. Also, you know, if a power-up drops that you don't want, like what just happened just now, you gotta make sure you don't accidentally grab it. You wanna stick to the weapons that are for crying out loud. See, that's what I'm talking about. You wanna stick to the weapons that that work for you. So weapons that you don't want actually become a threat. They become an obstacle to avoid. So oftentimes uh, falling weapon uh, changes can actually be more of a danger than the enemies. You know, they can be really hard to avoid. And if you pick up the wrong weapon, it might totally mess up your uh, strategy. Might might ruin your, uh, your, your run at that stage, at that point in time. So yeah, you want to be really careful about not picking up weapons that you don't know how to use, or that you're not good with, or that generally suck. Although most of the weapons in this game are great, so it's hard for me to say that. I feel like any weapons in this game that... Um, that don't work that well for me, it's because I just haven't learned them, as opposed to them being particularly bad weapons. Um, although I think there are a couple weapons that could really be uh, a little more useful. Like the, uh, what's an example? The scatter shot, for instance. The scatter shot is, um, it'd be great in the hands of a master, I suppose, but, uh, I just find it to be very unwieldy. And uh, then you've got the power-up shot, which you have to power it up. I mean, you're, you're kind of vulnerable while you're powering it up. Again, might be uh, very useful in the hands of a pro, but uh, I have not found it to be uh, my forte at all. I'll stick to the laser and the uh, circle, I think. I used to just use the circle pretty much exclusively when I was a kid, but now I'm a big proponent of the laser. And the laser is now at level 4. You can see it up in the top left there. Level 4 laser. Whew. And I've got two gold ships built up. The more enemies you defeat without uh, getting hit, the more gold ships you can accumulate. 
So I'm actually in really good shape right now. I'm on level four with two gold ships, powered up weapon. That means I can take, let's see, one, two, three. I believe I can take four hits now without dying. So yeah, I'm in good shape. We'll see how far I can get. I don't know what this place is supposed to be. It's it's definitely not Earth. It's not uh, it's not the atmosphere. You know, we've uh, we've cleared Earth's atmosphere. I think now we're going more towards uh, other other lands that have been colonized by these uh, evil aliens. So this is some some nebula somewhere, I'm sure. And I'm gonna be quiet for a minute because this music is incredible. It's unbelievable. Yes, excellent. I'm a huge fan of the uh, music in the first level, but I have to admit that the music in this level might just take the cake. It might be the best music out of all of them. But I don't know, there's so many great stage themes in this game, it's, it's hard to say. But yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, playing through all of uh, Super Aleste. Um, I believe I've only beaten this game once, ever, and it was... Uh, a few years ago, I think. I don't, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> Oops, smart bombs. I'm getting like really, uh, really oppressed here by all these these enemies. They're really kind of giving me no uh, movement here, or, or no room to, to move. But yeah, when I was a kid, couldn't get past level 10. Level 10 was hard. Huge difficulty spike. Little did I know that I only had two more levels after that. If I had just stuck with it a little longer, I'm sure I would have... Uh, Sure would have been able to beat it, but uh, Link's Awakening awaited. So what can I say? And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to playing those later levels again, seeing uh, seeing how level 10 is for me now. If it's as hard as it was when I was a kid, or uh, or what? So also because I've only seen the last two levels uh, once ever, and it was when I beat the game. Uh, I'd like to see them again. I've played the first 10 levels to death, but those last two, just once. Ooh, I knew that was coming. Watch out, watch out, watch out. The one downside to the laser is that when it's low power, it won't fire right in front of you. Damn it, uh, I'm, I'm taking all my hits here. So my weapon is now disempowered. Um, I think I'm down to one gold ship. <laughs> So I believe I can take two more hits. I think if your weapon's at full power, damn it. I think if your weapon is at full power, you can actually take two hits before your weapon disempowers. It'll just like downgrade a little bit each time. Um, a lot of shooters, you just get hit one time and it's game over. You have to start start the level over, you know. So the fact that this game doesn't do that for, to you, it, it makes. It makes it much more accessible. It makes it much easier to play this game um, when you don't have to worry as much about like getting hit once and having to start the level over. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm up to two gold ships. So I think I'm all right. I I took a bunch of hits though, and uh, it was not good. That's definitely going to put a little bit of a hamper on my progress for sure. Because I'd like to get as far as I can with this. Um, <laughs> This particular play play session. Oh God. Okay, this level is a big difficulty spike. I think this is a big step up from the first three levels. There's a lot going on on screen here. You just have to be careful though. Just uh, take out all these missile launcher things as fast as you can. Oh geez, I picked up the wrong weapon. I'm not a fan of the scatter. Jeez. Well. <laughs> I think this is it, guys. I think, uh, oh god. I think this is it. Oh, Jesus. My god, I am so screwed. I am completely and utterly screwed. Oh, sweet, it's the second boss theme. This is badass music right here. 
It better be, because I have very little chance of winning. <sighs> Whew! Stuck with a weapon I don't want and can't take any hits. You know, this just got really fun, actually. <sighs> Did I win? Oh my god, I won. Luckily, that guy does not have a whole lot of health. <laughs> Whew. Whew, I thought that was it. I was like certain that that was it. All right, area five. This is some kind of uh, mining canyon. I, I don't know. This is a difficulty spike. You want to talk about difficulty spikes. Uh, stage four was a big difficulty spike for sure. But stage five is even bigger. I, if I remember correctly, the next few stages are all easier than this one. It's like stage stage five is is uh, super tough, and then like six, six and seven aren't too bad, and eight and nine. I mean, seven and eight have some tough tough moments for sure, but uh, the game doesn't get this tough again until stage ten, which obviously is the uh, bane of my childhood. Yeah. Ooh, great music here too. Take a listen. See, this part's really tricky. <laughs> you have to follow these things and be very careful not to blow them up. Also, you've got these little guns uh, flanking you from the sides. It's not uh, not a fun time at all. Also, you have to constantly look out for falling rocks in this level. And uh, some parts of this level actually become kind of like a puzzle because you have to kind of chew your way through uh, through all this destructible debris. But you don't want to get yourself trapped either. I just want to take a quick moment to shout out to the um, the voice, whoever did the voices in this game. The, the guy who announces when you get power-ups. He's got a great little voice. He's just like, laser. It's like, multiple shot. But mainly, uh, laser. I love that guy. I think more games need to add that kind of voiceover, you know, where it's just like, you know letting you know what power-ups you've got. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm really like tired and sick right now. <laughs> so, trying to like form a complete thought is a little bit laborious currently. All right, you gotta watch out for these uh, giant stone phalluses that come out from the walls. They can be very dangerous, you know. Easy, easy. <sighs> oh, I was so close to uh, getting through that. So close. Multiple shot. Multiple shot. Oof. Oh, that was close. That was really close. Yeah, this stage, I'm telling you, this stage is is, uh, is the spike. It is the spike. The spike of difficulty spikes. I mean, stage 10 is worse, but uh, this one has like all the rock, the rock things you have to dodge. The bits of meteorite falling, falling on your head. Oh shit, was that? No, that wasn't it. I've still got gold ships. We're good, we're good, we're good. Also, the boss of this level is really tough. And I believe it's coming up soon. We'll see if I even get to the boss, though, because this part is unreal. Uh, just as I say that. 
Oof. When in doubt, just smart bomb. You know, screw it. Don't try to be a hero. It's one of my favorite expressions. Don't try to be a hero. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh... We are very close to, uh... We're very close to our demise here. Very, very close. Can I make it? Can I make it to the boss? Nope. Alright guys, that was how far can I get in Space Megaforce without dying. Uh, tune in soon when I actually play through the entire game. It's gonna be awesome. I'll see you then.